rapid sequence induction. In this video, we will highlight the principles behind rapid sequence induction. We will look at the preparation of equipments, drugs and the patient for a rapid sequence induction. And we will also demonstrate the procedure with a detailed emphasis on the identification and application of cricoid pressure. Rapid sequence induction is a method of inducing anesthesia in a selected group of patients. On induction of anesthesia, the lower esophageal sphincter relaxes, thereby increasing the risk of aspiration of stomach contents. Certain patients are assumed to have full stomach and therefore at increased risk of aspiration and regurgitation. The following are some examples. Patients who had a recent meal or couldn't reveal the time of last meal. Patients with delayed stomach emptying caused by opioids or alcohol or pain. Patients with increased gastric acid reflux, for example, obesity, gastroesophageal reflux disease or pregnancy. Rapid sequence induction aims to achieve rapid induction and intubation without actually ventilating the lungs or stomach, thereby reducing the risk of aspiration. The application of cricoid pressure as a part of rapid sequence induction is to minimize aspiration by occluding the esophagus against the cervical vertebrae. This picture shows the necessary equipments required for a rapid sequence induction. If there is an intubation trolley in your department, ensure all these equipments are available and checked. You will need working laryngoscopes, which should include a short and a long blade Macintosh and a McCoy blade, different sizes of endotracheal tubes, laryngeal mask airway, oral pharyngeal airway, mask with a filter, catheter mount, syringe for inflating the cuff of an endotracheal tube, gel and swabs, Megill's forceps, bougie and a tape or tie to secure the endotracheal tube. Apart from these instruments, a mean of ventilation should be available and checked. Suction must be on and suction catheter kept close to the patient. Commonly used induction drugs are either thiopentone or propofol. Thiopentone is available as 500 mg in a vial and is diluted to 20 ml. Propofol is available as one person in a 20 ml ampule. Commonly used muscle relaxant is succinamethonium, but sometimes rocronium is used. Succinamethonium is available in a 2 ml ampule and rocronium in a vial as 50 mg in 5 ml. Resuscitation drugs like ephedrine, atropine and metraminol should be available as cardiovascular collapse can occur at induction. The procedure should be explained to the patient, including the application of cricoid pressure, a pillow under the head to optimize the intubating position, establish a venous axis and a good flowing IV drip, establish the monitoring which should include pulse oximetry, a means of measuring blood pressure, ECG, and the capnography for measuring entire carbon dioxide. Also ensure that the trolley could be tilted head down. pre oxygenation is done for 3 minutes or more with a tight fitting face mask. Just before induction, cricoid is identified and a pressure of approximately 10 newtons is applied. Induction is commenced with a predetermined dose of either thiopentone or propofol and this should be immediately followed by a muscle relaxant. Following succinamethonium, wait for 60 seconds before attempting intubation. Once intubated, confirm its placement by observing entitled carbon dioxide and also by listening to the chest at both axilla. 
Cricord pressure can be released at this point only after a verbal request from the anesthetist. Secure the endotracheal tube according to the local practice. Cricoid pressure should be applied by trained and competent staff. Too much or too little pressure on cricoid can lead to airway complications at induction of anesthesia and potentially compromise patient safety. Cricoid cartilage can be identified on a patient by palpating the thyroid cartilage, otherwise called as Adam's apple, and following down to feel the rigid cricoid cartilage. These two cartilages are connected by cricoid thyroid ligament. A perpendicular pressure applied on cricoid by using the thumb, index and middle finger will theoretically occlude the esophagus against the cervical vertebrae. The Difficult Airway Society recommends the use of 10 newtons pressure when the patient is about to be induced and 30 newtons once the patient is asleep. One way to practice this is by using a weighing scale. 10 newtons on a weighing scale is 1 kg force and 30 newtons is 3 kg. A much easier way of practicing is by using a capped 50 ml syringe with the plunger pulled back to 50 ml. Depressing the plunger to 34 ml is equivalent to application of 30 newtons of pressure. The difficult part in training and clinical practice is to sustain the crack out pressure of 30 newtons until the confirmation of endotracheal intubation. To conclude, Rapid sequence induction is done to reduce the risk of gastric aspiration. In this video, we saw how to prepare and perform a rapid sequence induction. We also demonstrated how to identify the cricoid cartilage and practice safe application of cricoid pressure. Thank you for watching.